If there's anything that matters to me with an FDM printer, it's that it kind of works out of the box. And look, I'm not trying to make excuses every time I do an FDM printer review that I am a noob when it comes to FDM printing, but I think it's important to reiterate my position in this part of the 3D printing industry so that I don't waste your time if you're more of an expert or advanced user. And whilst this printer certainly has all of those advanced tinkerer features enabled for it and available to it, I'm looking at it from the point of view of, I just want it to work. And I'm more than happy to say that this is actually one of the best 3D printers I've had for essentially out of the box experience and workflow. So without further ado, hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fauhammer Videos. And come with me now as I take a look at the Ender 5 S1. And there's a lot of building to go through with this printer, quite a lot of building, more than I've had with any other FDM printer before. That's mainly due to the chassis on it, which surrounds the entire print bed. But this gives me the opportunity to talk to you about the printer whilst we look at the unboxing and setup. And why have I ended up with another FDM printer, especially when I've got a channel that's dedicated to resin printers and specifically printing miniatures? This is essentially the opposite of what I want to be printing with most of the time. Well, that's simple really. Creality noticed the channel was growing and that I'm getting quite popular. Yay, I'm really happy about that and thank you for sticking with me. And they reached out and said, do you want to review some of our printers? And I said, yeah, what have you got coming? There's quite a lot of popularity in your 3D printer space. And they said, yeah, yeah, we can send you some resin printers. By the way, do you want an FDM printer? And I told them my position. I said, look, I'm still new to this and I can only really give it the beginner's view and the once over and the how easy it is out of the box. And they were like, yeah, fine. And I was like, okay, free printer. Why not? And I'm not going to go over everything about this printer because most of it goes over my head, but I will talk to you about what I do understand and what I think is relevant and interesting to most people. Unlike any of the other printers I've had before, this is actually based around a stable cube frame. So where the actual print bed would normally move back and forth on the Y axis, this actually stays in place and only moves in the Z direction. And because of that, you've got the hot end, which only moves in X and Y. So therefore you can get much more stability in your prints, leaving to much smoother and finer results. And it also allows you to increase the speed quite greatly without the actual bed wobbling the print when it starts to get too tall, causing all sorts of issues. This printer advertises a print speed of 250 millimeters a second. And in my experience, it delivers. The build area, however, I wish was a little bit bigger, at only 220 by 220 by 280 millimeters. Whilst not quite large enough for printing, say, cosplay helmets without slicing them up into smaller components, this was still too small to even print a Batman helmet for my son. But for things like miniature scenery, at even extremely small layer heights, this is a godsend because it can get these done in significantly better time than other types of 3D printers. Despite it taking a while to assemble, this is actually really easy by following the instructions paired with the video guide on the USB stick that you get with it. The touchscreen UI is both intuitive and straightforward and attractive, so there's nothing really to write home about, but it's still nice to see a good quality implementation from Creality. Semi-automatic bed leveling is pretty straightforward. Just stick a sheet of paper between the build plate and the nozzle and then press the five buttons on screen. Starting with button one, you just unscrew the knobs in the corners underneath the print bed and then you'll be able to lift it until it touches that paper and ever so slightly starts to score it. Do this with each of the four corners and then that's it. After that, it's then onto auto leveling. In its base form, the printer accepts files from the integrated SD card reader, although I said USB earlier, and it's nice to see an SD card in this because micro SD is the most flimsy material and not the best for transferring from one device to another. And it actually comes with a decent reel of test filament that you can get a few prints off with, unlike other brands who give you the smallest amount to just about get through your first print and all your filaments neatly mount to the side of the printer and then are fed through the runout sensor and then through a Bowden tube before they get to the direct drive extruder. You feed it in as far as it'll go, although this Bowden tube does need to be yanked out every time you need to replace filament, preheat the hot end and then feed it through and Bob's your uncle, it's done, ready to print. 
The printer includes two test files, which are a rabbit and a benchy, and I had absolutely no problems printing these at all, and they came out super fast at 250 millimeters a second. With incredible detail, it was still really, really stable. As an extra that I asked for, Creality also sent me this acrylic enclosure which goes around all the different sides of the printer and includes a door on the front. Now I would love to show you this being installed, but unfortunately I lost all the footage. But it's straightforward enough, all you need to do is put some connectors in the recesses in the actual frame and then some bolts through the holes that are pre-drilled into the acrylic. It's easy, it's just a bit time consuming. Now, whilst this enclosure is technically aimed at those people who want to print with higher temperature materials, as much as it'll protect from is the odd draft that might cause ABS to shrink or warp. So to be honest, because this isn't a full enclosure and doesn't enclose the top or the bottom and create an environment where it's got a set printing area temperature, as much as it does is make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing of a printer to look at. And it also keeps my kids fingers away from hot components. But to the new person, this printer genuinely is nothing more than plug and print. From all the test files to even when I printed my own files exclusively using PLA, because again, a beginner, I'm sticking to the simple stuff, everything was sharp where it needed to be and smooth where it needed to be. Absolutely fantastic, no complaints at all, except one. It does tend to string more than anything else I've used before, and I'm not sure why. Some of the reviews have indicated that this is because of the distance between the extrusion mechanism and the hot end being a bit further apart than other printers, but my understanding was that you would get stringing due to not having enough pullback from a Bowden tube, and obviously a Bowden tube extruder would have more angles to pull before it would actually pull away from the hot end. This is still in a straight line directly directly above the hot end, so it may just be over melting the material due to how hot this actual hot end gets, otherwise I'm not sure, but I am getting more stringing from this than anything else, and I'll figure out in time how to combat that. But it was so simple that it even worked with materials I'd struggled with in the past, such as this red flexible shiny material which I'd borrowed from a friend to test my first ever 3D FDM printer, and I couldn't get this working at all. All I had to do was set the normal temperature settings in the Creality printer, and it worked perfectly fine first time without issue. Now the other accessory I got with it was the Creality Smart Kit, which is basically a Wi-Fi connection box and a camera kit. What this is trying to do is essentially do what Octoprint does, but it's Creality branded and works specifically with your printer. So the idea is it gives you some remote control features and it also allows you to automatically create a time lapse with every print that you do, which is kind of cool. And this box just plugs straight into the printer with the camera plugging into this box. It's really easy to use because all you need to do then is connect it up via the app on your phone and then you've got full remote control of the printer with the ability to monitor it and create time lapses and also send prints directly to it from the Creality web store. The issues I found though is that this web store is certainly very big and powerful but it's an absolute mess and it's filled with components. I can't even figure out if I have to pay for some and some are free. It's got models on there that are clearly by other creators that have just been reshared but it also has some very very unwelcome adult content that shouldn't be part of this store at all and are just community posts by bots trying to get you on triple x websites honestly the whole approach is very much like shopping on aliexpress it's just chaos and unfortunately not even in a good way there may be some diamonds in this incredibly rough platform but i think this needed a few more months in the oven before it actually got released but then again, I have to stress, I'm much more the simple-minded person. I'm more Apple than Android. I prefer when things just work and present me cool stuff. I don't want to sit there and spend time tinkering, because 9 times out of 10, I'll get it wrong. And Creality, as the original ones that blew up, is very much still a tinkerer's machine. It'll work great out of the box for the beginner, and if you want to extend and do further and greater things, then you can, but you don't need to, because you get incredibly good quality straight away. 
And for me, who prints miniature components, I was able to do this with no effort at all. And all I had to do was change my layer height to 0.05 millimeters. I'll say that again, because that's not 0.5, that's 0.05 or 50 microns, which is resin level layers. I was able to do that by just changing the setting, keeping the print speed at 250 millimeters a second, and I still got an incredibly high quality print that's comparable to something printed at a higher layer height, much, much slower. And I mentioned this in my Chidi Tech X Plus 3 review, where I said another printer was capable of higher quality than that one. Well, the printer that's capable of higher quality is this one, but I'd already negged on that printer so much in that review that I didn't want to turn their printer review into an advert for this one. Now, if I was going to neg on this printer at all, it would be for the build surface. And this PC sheet is great because you get the two little notches on it that line it up with the magnetic plate every time, but this is far too sticky. I've had adhesion issues with filaments for years, everybody has, but the problem I've got with this one is that I actually struggle to get material off it to the point where I'm digging into the surface just to get underneath the filament to actually tear it away. And I'm having to do this with every print you can go out and buy different material sheets but this one it's just i love it it's fantastic but it's too good but for what i want to do my use case is print incredibly small layers so that i get the most detail and have the least post processing cleanup to do and i'm so happy that despite a bit of stringing that i'm sure i can fix i can print at 0.05 millimeter layers and print anything from miniature scenery to cosplay props unfortunately in this case the build plate is still too small to create even a cosplay prop that would fit my son but if I'm able to slice it down, then it'll work absolutely fine and I'll get incredible and I would say up to this point from what I've tested, unrivaled detail. So if you're looking for a stable, really high detail, easy to use machine that gives you the opportunity to tweak and tinker to the nth degree, then I would highly recommend this printer. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because we will be covering more Creality printers soon. I'm especially looking forward to covering their resin printers which we know much more about and you'll see more about that on the channel. But until then, huge thanks to you, huge thanks to our patrons who are up on the screen right now. Please consider joining so you can get early access to this content if including some Discord benefits and you've got direct access to me in case you've got any questions or need any support with your printers. But until next time, Thank you again, Fohama out.